Hey, this is John Sifferman from physicalliving.com, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you the optimal way to perform the parallel bar dip exercise, also known as tricep dips, and a few other names as well. I'm just going to be teaching you how to perform this not just properly, but optimally, so that you can really maximize your performance in the exercise, and the results and benefits you receive from it, and minimize the risk of injury, so that you don't hurt yourself from doing it improperly seen a lot of uh, lousy and sloppy dips over the years. I want to make sure that you don't make some of the common mistakes and really milk this exercise for all it's worth. It's a fantastic exercise. It's right up there with other calisthenics and bodyweight training greats like pull-ups and uh, push-ups and handstand push-ups. Really complements a lot of fitness and strength and conditioning programs well and chances are good that if you are at all involved in fitness or strength and conditioning uh, you should be including this exercise or one of its variations in your program periodically throughout um, your training cycles throughout the year. So, uh, I'm just going to walk you through it step by step. Forgive me if this uh, seems long and drawn out. I want to just discuss everything that I know about this exercise to help um, prepare you and equip you with the knowledge you need to perform it safely and efficiently so that you get as much as you can from it. Um, I'm going to be using this, uh, this walker as a prop, believe it or not. Um, this actually works great for a pair of dip bars at home if you want something that's portable that you can store. You don't have room for a whole power tower like this. Um, one of my brothers bought this for me a while ago and they support three, four, five hundred pounds depending on the model. And depending on your body structure, how wide your shoulders are and how tall you are, this might actually work um, for you to have a set of parallel bars at home. And I consider a set of parallel bars the best type of equipment for doing dips um, unless you are at a more advanced level then you might get into something like gymnastics frames but I'm going to be using this today because I don't have a full film crew uh, here in my humble uh, YouTube channel and this will just be easier to maneuver with the camera uh, but I'll show you another variation um, with these uh, towards the end so where to begin oh and speaking of which I these come really really handy after leg day uh, just in case uh, for that reason alone this just helps you to get around after you've been training your legs uh -huh. That was a joke for some of my bodybuilder friends. I'm not, I am not immobile after I train my legs. Hardly. I'm a parent. I, I need to be mobile. Protect my kids and play with them. Anyways, I'm going to give you the information now that you're interested in watching this video for. Because I've already, the, the introduction's taken like 100 minutes already. So where to begin with the exercise? Let's talk about posture first. We'll get it kind of out of the way. It's kind of boring, you know, posture. You know, you got to have good posture, right? But what does that look like with the exercise like the dip? Well, you have to... Maintain a what's called a neutral spine. The spine has a natural S curve, and when it's in an optimal position, it's called neutral spine. Not not really hunched over at the top, not really arced at the bottom. It's just a neutral spine. And how do we make this practical? How do we do this in an exercise? Well, you want to think about lengthening your spine in two different directions. So you're going to be lifting with the top of your head upwards, and and in combination with pulling your shoulders down will help you get a little bit more. Um, lift out of the, the upper part of your spine. We'll talk about shoulder pack in a minute. And you're also going to be want to reach reaching your lower spine downwards. So think about tucking your tailbone underneath, almost like a dog tucking its legs between its or tucking its tail between its legs. Um, just a slight tailbone tuck forward. That's going to be reaching your, your spine downwards. Your lower back will kind of flatten out a little bit. And in a minute we'll talk about how you can time that with your core contraction to tie everything together. I'm going to be covering this in lots of bits and pieces, but obviously when you're performing the exercise, you're going to boil this down into a couple very simple coaching cues. It's not super complicated once you get it, uh, but I want to make sure you know all the little details so that you can refine your technique and, again, maximize your results and minimize the risk of injury. So. Maintain a neutral spine throughout the full range of motion, all the way up, all the way down. I guess I should show you what the exercise is um, while we're at it, just in case you're not familiar yet. I could always splice some video in in the beginning. But this is the parallel bar dip, the bent knee version. And so throughout that full range of motion, you just want to maintain that spine as best as you can. And I read recently from, I think it was Mike Robertson, who's a really high-level strength and conditioning coach, really well-respected. He said that the neutral spine is a range, which makes a lot of sense. We, talk, we tend to think in absolutes, especially in the fitness industry, you have to have that perfect posture or the exercise is just crap, right? And it's not true. You know, uh, the neutral spine is, is uh, a range where there's a, a safe range where you're at a much lower risk of injuring yourself. That's really the big point with posture is not just to um, perform the exercise properly, 
um, and, and be more efficient and effective and stronger because if you do use better posture, you will be much stronger. You, you'd rather you have much better access to your body's strength when everything's lined up properly. Um, but the, the whole point of posture is to not reinforce a bad habit and not hurt yourself because if things are not aligned, then that's when problems start to happen. So maintain a neutral spine throughout the full range of motion. Keep in mind that it's a generally considered a range of safe, um, safe positions, especially if you're not adding additional load to your body, which you can do with this exercise. And I'd recommend if you're at an intermediate or advanced level, you know, throw on a weight vest, throw on a, uh, a backpack um, or a weight belt if your goals support that. You know, there's no reason you can't add additional load to a body weight exercise. Um, but just don't uh, deviate too far from that neutral spine. You don't want to be uh, slouching your upper back or uh, a lot of people often, especially when they're coming up, they'll arc their lower back, um, especially with the straight leg version. And you don't want to be doing that too much. You don't want to make that a habit. It might create problems in the future. Sorry I talked about that for so long. All right, let's talk about the shoulders now, what the shoulders should be doing. I teach uh, what has been called shoulder pack. And this is basically just a way of describing how the shoulders are stabilized on the rib cage. So you want to maintain not just good posture throughout the whole range of motion of the exercise, you also want to maintain shoulder pack throughout the whole range of motion of the exercise. And this is very um, difficult for some people to do and it's probably one of the most common problems I see is people coming out of shoulder pack. And, and that puts your shoulder at a disadvantageous position and it's just a weaker position, higher likelihood of injury. And so if you can't maintain shoulder pack during dips, you want to work on that um, and not do dips, especially heavy weighted dips, um, if you can't. So only work within the range of motion that you can maintain shoulder pack and um, use training wheels if necessary um, to get you there. So what that means is performing the opposite of a shoulder shrug. You know, this would be very unpacked shoulders with my shoulder shrugged upwards. So instead of shrugging them upwards, you're going to shrug them downwards and really pack them down tight onto your torso. And this just creates stability, strength, and uh, allows you to more efficiently and more effectively transfer strength between your torso and your arms because your, your arms and your shoulders and your chest are primarily what's, you know, um, driving this exercise, pr pr producing the force for this exercise, and you want that to transfer into lifting your body against gravity in this exercise. And if your shoulders are loose, then there's going to be a leakage. You're going to be weaker and it's the exercise is going to be harder. So keep those shoulders pulled down, you know, retracted down and slightly back is another cue that I might use with certain people. So just play around with the position. It should just feel very solid and just keeping your shoulders low and connected with your torso, especially in the top position where you know it should be easy to hold here and you could even hold this just uh, for time for an exercise to work on your shoulder pack um, under load if you wanted to just thinking of pressing uh, downwards into the bars and keeping your keeping your shoulders low and then you want to maintain that throughout the full range of motion so you go as low as you can and then press back up as low as you can press back up you maintain that throughout the full range of motion. So with the elbows now, you're, the main key is that you perform full range of motion um, in the exercise. I see a lot of people who do partial dips. They're like, you know, they'll be like, yeah, I just did a hundred dips, man. You should have seen it. I just did a hundred reps in a row. It was easy. And it's like, yeah, of course it was easy. You didn't really do a hundred reps in a row. Um, and that's a very, I, I'm not going to say it's a training mistake because it's a, it's a legitimate technique to perform partial repetitions, but for the vast majority of people who are interested in fitness and strength and conditioning, getting stronger, getting more fit, getting healthier, the bulk of your training should involve full range of motion in the vast majority of all your exercises. I'm kind of leaking here. Sorry. It's very, very cold out today. It's like, I think it was 40 below zero or not below zero, 40 below freezing when I got up. I'm like a leaky faucet. Um, so you just you want to go through a full range of motion at the elbows. So what that means is, oh geez, I'm gonna have to show you this. This is gonna be hard to see with a sweater on. You want your in the top position. You want you want your elbows fully locked out. So not this partial stuff. And some coaches teach you not to fully lock out your elbows. I don't know what they're smoking or thinking, 
Um, you want to train a full range of motion. You want to strengthen not just your muscles, but the joints too. Uh, they're part of your body and, and your, your bones too. And believe, believe it or not, it all gets hit when you're strength training. Um, so you want to come to a full lockout in the top position. What that means is that your elbow pits, this pit right here in, in, in your elbow, are facing forward. And as you fatigue, it's going to get tougher and tougher. Um, like towards the end of a set, towards the end of the workout, you're just going to be getting tight and tense. and um, It's going to be tougher and tougher to rotate your elbow pits forward at, at the top of each repetition like, like so. And so they might be tempted to be pointing inwards towards your center line. And so you just want to make sure that when you get to the top, you get that full lockout position and and that would be the top position. When you're going down to the bottom position, you just want to uh, go as low as your range of motion allows and try and get to the point where your upper arms are approximately parallel with the ground or um, you can go up slightly deeper than that. You don't want to go super deep and get into an extreme range of motion um, unless you're unless you're uh, unless you know what you're doing. Um, but for the vast majority of people, you just want to get as low as you can comfortably until your upper arm is about parallel with the ground or slightly lower if your flexibility allows and um, then press yourself up. The other thing with the elbows um, is you want to keep them in tight to your sides, to your ribcage. You almost want them gliding along the side of your ribcage. You do not want them to flare out. You know, think about trying to do dips on a pair of bars that are really wide. It'd be really tough. You know, you just you'd be really weak in this position and yet that's what a lot of people do when they get on the dip bars is they flare their elbows out and it's just an awkward unnatural weak position it's just a common mistake and so don't let yourself do it if you can't um, if you can't perform dips with your elbows in tight you know, like so I guess I'll show you that's one from the front I don't know if this will you know, be a good angle from the back for you to see as well but and so that would be in tight, and try to avoid um, performing them like really flared out like that. See the difference? It's just, it's just not a good idea. Um, so keep them in tight, and if you can't keep them in tight with a parallel bar dip, drop the difficulty level of the exercise down um, to a point until you can. Because if your elbows are in tight, you're just going to be in a more biomechanically uh, efficient position, and you're going to be stronger. Um, Alright, so that's the elbows. The wrists and the hands and the, the grip. The main thing is that you want to keep your, your wrist in as close to a neutral position as possible. And what that means is keeping it straight. You don't want it to be extended like so, and you don't want it to be flexed like so. You want to keep it straight, you know, stacked. All the, all the uh, joints and bones, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand, stacked on top of one another. You're going to be a lot stronger in that position. Um, with dips, um, some people experience discomfort in their wrists and their hands when performing it and, and all over really, but if you, if you do have trouble with uh, your wrists or your hands, it's okay to extend the wrist a little bit and rest your weight on your palm a little bit more. You just want to be um, aware that you're breaking an optimal alignment and so you know there's a risk to benefit ratio with every little choice in training and so you just want to, you just want to be careful, you know, use your head. Don't train through pain because the pain is a signal you're doing something wrong or causing some problem to get worse. Um, but it's okay to um, uh, uh, extend your, your wrists a little bit if that's more comfortable for you. Alright, so that would be the grip. Let's talk about core. What do you do with your core? Uh, is it, what, is it just coming along for the ride? Or, or are we actually doing something with your core? Well, you're going to do something because the, the dip exercise is not just for your triceps and pecs. It's a full body exercise. It's true your tricep and pecs are going to feel it a lot more than, say, your, you know, your, your soleus muscle. Um, but you want to be engaging the rest of your body so that you can um, train full body strength and, and recruit the most amount of your potential strength in every single repetition you train. So with the core, you're, you're basically... I'll teach it in two stages. One, you want to keep everything uh, slightly contracted, slightly tight, so that uh, because tighter is lighter. You just the exercise is going to be easier if everything is is locked down and tight, um, and you don't want to be loose. And this kind of goes along with that uh, spinal alignment, keeping a neutral spine. Um, and 
And so what that looks like, I won't get into all the details, you know, you gotta lift your pelvic floor muscles with your abdominal crunch and dry your obliques down and you know, I won't get into all that. I just want you to focus on keeping everything tight and contracted, not like super squeezing everything hard, but keep everything tight. And especially when performing um, the concentric portion of the exercise where you're actually pressing yourself up, everything should be really tight. And with core activation, you want to combine this with your breathing. So in the top position, you're going to inhale on your way down. Most people, uh, this is what I teach to the vast majority of people. There's certain exceptions to this that I, that I might teach depending on your, depending on your goals, your conditioning level, etc., etc. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, I'm going to teach you to inhale on the way down, exhale up. And it should be a powerful, forceful exhalation, um, not a hiss, not the Valsalva maneuver, uh, just a forceful exhale. And with that exhale, you're combining that with a powerful core contraction. Um, so everything just kind of gets tight here. You uh, draw your belly in, you kind of perform a, uh, you know, like a three degree crunch, you know, just enough to activate the musculature, you know, no movement at all, dry your obliques down. Um, etc. etc. You're going to be squeezing your glutes as well and your thighs um, just to tighten everything up because tighter is lighter you're going to be stronger um, with that core activation um, as well. So the legs, what do we do with the legs? Well there's two things you can do. If you only have a low, a, a low set of bars like these you just cross them um, or, or bend them, or what I mean. You can cross your ankles or keep your ankles pressed together doesn't really matter um, and and this is fine, this is okay. Um, you just want to keep keep them tight, squeeze your thighs especially, keep them close together, you know, squeeze them together, just uh, contract them isometrically, just because if you're tighter, you're going to be stronger and you're going to feel lighter. If you do have access to a taller set of bars where you can actually straighten your legs, then this is actually a, a better version of the exercise, a, a superior version, if you ask me. And if you... If you uh, do have them, then I want you to point your toes, lock your knees, squeeze your glutes and thighs, and that's just how you perform the exercise. Like so, you just perform your reps like that. Like so. And I, I like that better if you have if you have access to a higher set of parallel bars, then definitely uh, use them because you're gonna be able to recruit more total body strength, believe it or not, even just uh, with your legs straightened out and your toes pointed. So. That's what you do with your legs. Um, let's see, what else is there? I guess common mistakes, I've already covered some of them. Unpacking the shoulders, uh, especially in the bottom position. You might be able to pack them in the top, but as you get lower and lower, they come up really high and they're just really uncomfortable and you're grim grimacing in your face and you want to avoid that. Don't unpack the shoulders. Uh, another common mistake, performing the partial repetitions. You don't want to do that unless you have a very good reason for doing it. Um, and are probably an advanced trainee. Um, straining your neck um, backwards or, or any permutation of, of breaking the neutral spine. You know, you want to be lifting with the crown of your head upwards. You don't want to be straining back or pushing your head forward like a turtle or anything like that. Um, or rounding the upper back like I discussed earlier, um, especially in the top. Or, um, I'll show you on this one. Um, arcing your lower back, especially during the ascent portion, like so. See a lot of that. Um, and there's and there's other mistakes I've seen over the years that I just can't think of right now. There seems there's enough uh, enough people out there who don't know what they're doing when it comes to exercise, and that's okay. Uh, at least they're out there. At least they're doing something. And um, so yeah, those are the the most common mistakes. And man, I am leaking. I might even be somewhat self-conscious about it because I keep rubbing my nose. Um, so I'm going to wrap up this video. And if you have any questions about the dip exercise, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you. And I'd love to hear feedback on this video. If you like this type of video, would like to see more in the future. I put this together for, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name now. Uh, it was a young lady who asked me about dips on my website. And if you have any questions, you can contact me on my website, physicalliving.com. And I'm John Sifferman, once again. Please take care, and hopefully I'll see you around the internet.